Humankind has an insatiable curiosity to understand how things work, how we work, how our world around us works. Traditionally, supercomputers have been used to generate insight into scientific problems that we did not understand. We're at the point where high-performance computing technology could really make a breakthrough. It's really the space race of this century. Scientific discovery went through several phases. At some point, people decided that computer models, also known as simulations, are a very, very important mechanism to actually answer deep scientific questions. Supercomputers have hit certain thresholds over time. Gigascale, Terascale, Petascale, soon we'll have Exascale. 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 Exascale computing is uh, the next frontier of high-performance computing. What is Exa? Exa means 10 to the 18th or a billion, billion operations per second. A billion, billion calculations, flops. Flops are floating point operation per second. That's one with 18 zeros after it. Around 2008 is when we broke the petaflop barrier. A petaflop is 10 to the 15 um, floating point operation per second. So now we're talking about getting to an exaflop. If you add all the top 500 supercomputers that are available in the world today, you get to an exascale. So this is kind of crazy, right, when you think about it. Once you have the ability to simulate an exascale level. Right now we're talking about 2021 as sort of the target. Then you can find more answers to questions because you really haven't had the ability to model at that level. Of course, other countries are working on the same research because whoever gets there first has the keys to innovation and discovery. We can do an exaflop today, but it'd be very impractical. And so as we move forward, we'll need to do research leading to exascale technologies. To talk about why we can't do more of the same, let's go back to the path we were on. Over time, computers have become more and more powerful because we could pack the circuitry closer and closer together. That's been working great, but at some point, you reach a physical limit. You can't get the transistors any smaller. The other problem is that moving data is costly from a power standpoint. Uh, what does that mean? To do a calculation, you need the data. The cost of moving data within the system is more expensive and more difficult than just doing the computation itself. With today's technology, the Exascale supercomputer would consume 650 megawatts of power. 650 megawatts. That's the size of a small power plant. This is not something that we can build using yesterday's architecture. We really have to rethink it from the ground up. Our vision is to move the data much more efficiently and use much less energy. We refer to it as memory-driven computing. Memory-driven computing. And that is one of the major innovations that we're working on at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So why Exascale? Why are we building Exascale supercomputers? Some people wonder, what does it do for me? A patient that might have cancer, for example, how can we find the right therapy for that particular patient in the fastest way possible? In the past, the treatment for cancer was a shotgun approach. Basically bombard everything and see if by killing everything you also hit the cancer cells. Today, anybody that's got access to social media kind of understands the people you may know thing, right? Well, imagine doing the same thing for cancer therapy. Patients would walk into the doctor, get tissue samples, get the DNA sequence. And all of that gets pushed into a system that basically would be able to match your genome profile to hundreds of thousands of other people's profiles. And the doctor would be able to tell you the best outcome is really to go with this specific treatment. And it could be the dosage of drugs, when the drug should be delivered. The Exaskill brings you the ability to ingest a lot more data to build that system that can be in all hospitals around the world to increase, basically, people's chances of survival of cancer. Another great application for Exascale computing is in the area of weather forecasting, weather prediction. Today's weather models use a grid. With the computing power we have, we can reach precisions of maybe about 20 kilometers. There's only so much we can do. There's only such a level of accuracy that we can have. Scientists believe that they can build models that can get you to a few kilometers precision within the next four or five years. The higher resolution you get, the more accurate your weather prediction is. Then we can better respond and help those that are impacted. 
a far more precise weather model which could be enabled by exascale machines can have a significant impact on catastrophic events and the response we can put in place to avoid them. I think the use case for exascale in space research is one of the most exciting ones that we have. The latest instrument that's being built, it's called the Square Kilometer Array. The so-called Square Kilometer Array, which is a kilometer by a kilometer tiled with radio telescopes. With the goal of mapping the visible universe. So how much data is the Square Kilometer Array generating? Well, it's about an exabyte a day. An exascale class machine is pretty much mandatory to be able to address that kind of data. We then take this to the next step with models and simulations of worlds that we cannot see visibly, coupling that in with what we can see. You can start to get a better sense of how the universe works and even leading to things like how the universe is born. Each increase in order of magnitude is a big deal. And I like to think of it this way. If I can walk, I can explore my neighborhood. If I ride my bicycle, I can explore my city. When I drive a car, I can explore the country. And if I fly, I can explore the world. We're gonna go explore the world.